Hello guys, you're welcome back to my Adobe Premiere Pro Masterclass. If you're just joining us, you're welcome. My name is Imo King. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to create a photo slideshow in Adobe Premiere Pro. the pictures from these tutorials are from pexels.com. Pexels.com give us an array of stock footages. I'll be sure to drop the links of every of the pictures in the description tab below so you might want to go ahead and check on that. Kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now let's dive right into the tutorial. So the first thing I would like to do is to import an image into my timeline and then you will notice automatically that the image has not covered the entire screen. And the reason for this is because the size of the image and the size of the sequence is not the same. Another thing you will notice is that the image automatically stopped at 5 seconds over here and this is my auto default settings from Premiere Pro. So if you don't want this, you can go ahead and move to edit over here, click on your preference and under your preference you can go on to timeline and inside timeline you can change the duration for your still images, your audio transition default timeline, your video transitions and a couple of other things over here. So I'll just leave this at 5%. Now the next thing I want to do is to scale my image to assume the position of my sequence. So I'll come over to my scale property here and increase the scale of this image to fit. Okay, 204 seems fine. So the next thing I'll do is to select my other images and drag them into my timeline. Now that I've done that, you will notice that the remaining of my images are not properly aligned also. So I'll just come over back to this image, right click and hit on copy and select my other images. And then I'll hit on paste attributes and select the motion property there and hit OK. And automatically you will notice that all the other images have scaled now to the size of my sequence. Now, because these images are not exactly of the same size, you may want to come and adjust the properties to fit any angle you want them to be. Like for this, I could move this to come over to the right position. Okay, that looks fine. So all my images look properly aligned and centralized. The next thing I would like to do is to select all my images over here, hit on Alt and drag them to the top to duplicate it. And automatically I've duplicated them. Next thing I would like to do is to toggle off my video track 2 so that the video track 1 will remain visible. So the next thing I would like to do is to select my image 1 over here, move over to my effects tab over here and search Gaussian Blur. Scroll down and apply Gaussian Blur to my image 1. I'll go down to effects control and then I can increase the blurriness of my Gaussian blur to 75%. Now you'll notice that at the edge there seems to be a form of black there so I'll select, I'll take this repeat edge to take away that black that is visible there. Next thing I would like to do is to select on this Gaussian blur, copy it and select the remaining videos here and hit Ctrl V and automatically you will notice that the blur effect has been applied to every of this image as well. The next thing I would like to do is to toggle on my track 2 so I can see the images at the top over here. Select the image at the top here, toggle on the scale property, reduce the size to 170. 170 seems fine for me, so I'll take the 170 till the end. The next thing I'll do is I'll make the value at the beginning 150. Next thing I would like to do is to select this and hit is in. Select the last key over here and hit is out. Now the next thing you would like to do is to come over here to this motion property. Select it, right click and copy it. 
I'll come over to the entire clips I have here at the top, the remaining clips, and then I'll hit Control V. You will see that we have automatically added that property to the rest of the images. The next thing I would like to do is to add a white shadow to it. So I'll come over to my Effects tab and look for Shadow. So when I scroll down, when you scroll down under your perspective, you'll find Drop Shadow and Radial Shadow. I'll select the Radial Shadow, select my first image at the top, and drag the Radial Shadow right on top of my first image at the top. And if I come over to Effects Control, the first thing I would like to do is to change the shadow color from black to white. I would like to change the opacity from 50 to 100. Select Resize the Layer box over here. I'll change my projection distance to 3. So just change the values of your light source so you have a nice even border around your image. So if I scroll through this now, you can see what this looks like now. Next thing I want to do is to come over here to my radial shadow, right click and copy it. Select all my other images. Oh, sorry about that, guys. I'll select all my other images over here and hit Ctrl V to paste it. So if I move to all my other images, you will see that they all have the same effect applied to all of them. Now I'm going to drag in the drop shadow. The good thing is we already have our drop shadow popped up at this point here. I'm going to drag it on top of my first image once again. So I'm going to change the softness over here to 100 and the distance to 20. So the next thing you're going to do is to select the drop shadow, right click and copy it. And once again, I'm going to select all my other clips and I'm going to hit Ctrl V. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is to apply slide effects to all my pictures over here. So what you want to do is to go back to effects and then you type on slide. Scroll down to your video transitions and you will find slide over here. Now I can lift these slides one after the other and drop them on my images here. But that would be a very long process. So what I'm going to do is to right click on this slide and then I'm going to select this as my default transition. Once that is done, I can come over to all the images over here, except the first cut that I've already applied it to. And then I'll just hit Ctrl D and automatically I've applied the same push transition to all my images. Now, if I move past all my images, you will see that same slide effect coming past every single one of them. So to change the direction of your slide, you don't want all your slides to move in the same direction. You can decide to select on this other slide property here, and then you can select this arrow pointing up and select the one down also, and you can select the arrow pointing up. So if I move now from this direction, instead of it to come from that same angle, it's going to be coming from up to down. So you can see now it's coming from up to down. All you need to do is to select on this transition and you can move up to this arrow over here. And once you hit on this arrow, it's going to move from up to down. If you decide to move to the next picture and leave it that way, it's going to move in the same left direction. So you can decide to move it from, you can decide to select on your transition and move it from up to down, right to left, left to right or down to up. However way you prefer it is going to move in that direction. Now, the next thing I would like to apply to this image is a rotation effect. So you just come over to your first image over here, and then you can select, toggle on your rotation, and then you might decide to increase the value of your rotation from minus eight at the beginning. To plus three at the end. Don't forget guys to always move your keys to the beginning and the end. So you want to select this and ease in. Don't forget to select the right one also and ease out. So now you can see the rotation that has been added to this image over here. 
wow it's already looking nice once again you want to select on your rotation property and hit on ctrl c and then you select your remaining clips at the top here and then you can just hit ctrl v to paste So for some reason that doesn't seem to be working on my Premiere Pro, I don't know why. So I'm probably going to manually apply it to the rest of my pictures. Sorry about that guys, so I'll just toggle on rotation over here, make the value minus 9. Is in, take it to the beginning. Then make the next one 4, take it to the end, take this to the end, take this to the beginning also. Stay tuned guys, I'm just going to fast forward and apply the effects to all of this. Don't forget that you have access to these images in the description section below. Kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel if you've not already done that so you can get updates on my future videos as soon as they drop. And don't forget to drop your feedbacks in the comment section. I so appreciate feedbacks. Now let's go ahead and see what the video looks like. Alright guys, now the rotation has been applied. We can see what the images look like. Let me just go ahead and fast forward this. We can see our slide rotation. Alright, they are all looking good. The last thing I would like to add into this is a 3D effect to our image. Under your video effects, you go over to perspective and under perspective you select the basic 3d then you drag it on top of your image one at the top now once you have done that you scroll down to your basic 3d and then you are going to add some values to your swivel and your tilt keys over here so to my swivel i'm going to make it minus eight at the beginning add a toggle on effect to it and at the end over here i'm going to make this minus three and then i'm going to take it to the end so for my tilt i'm going to make this minus 15. i'm going to toggle on and ease in Take it to the beginning and at the end I'm going to make it 9. And take it to the end. Alright now, so you can see what it looks like now. We have added some 3D effects to our image. So I'll go back to the beginning over here. Scroll down to my basic 3D. Select it, right click and copy it. And then I'm going to select my other clips over here and hit Ctrl V. All right, guys, and this is it on how to create a 3D photo slideshow in Adobe Premiere Pro. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Don't forget to drop your feedback. Thank you so much for watching this video to the end.